Hi everyone, this is Dr. Nally. In this topic, we want to discuss thermodynamics and thermochemistry. And this is really associated with the study of energy for chemical reaction. So thermodynamics is a general term that we use to talk about the study of interchange of energy in various processes. So for example, if you're pushing a car, you're exerting energy, the car is moving. So there you're talking about mechanical energy. We can also talk about electrical energy, which is energy, for example, that's used uh, when you're using your battery to power your cell phone, chemical energy, and so on. Now, in this particular chapter, we, we care mostly about chemical energy, and specifically about heat that's released or gain um, in a chemical reaction. So that's what we're going to focus on uh, by the end of the chapter. But in order to get there, we need to talk about some terms and definitions associated with thermodynamics, and that's what we'll do in the first one or two videos. Next question is why do we want to study energy of reactions? Well it turns out you know at this point you're, you're fairly familiar with the idea that when we have a chemical reaction right we see a change in front of our eyes right we can see it in a test tube for example sometimes you mix two solutions together and once you the reaction happens you see that you know one of the products is a solid uh, and there might be a color change um, and you might also see that one of the other products is a gas. So it's pretty clear that when a chemical reaction happens, there's a change in the identity of the molecules. Molecules that were originally present, the reactants are no longer present. Molecules, uh, new molecules are made, which we call the products. But it turns out that in all reactions, you also have a change in the energy content of the reaction itself. So when you have the reactants, you have a certain amount of energy and when you have the products, you have a different amount of energy a lot of times. So what we're interested in is measuring this energy change. We want to know, is the energy increasing uh, as a result of the reaction, or is the energy decreasing as a result of the reaction? Okay, now we're talking specifically about the energy of the reaction itself, which we you'll see later on is defined as the energy of the system. Um, it, the understanding of this energy of this reaction helps us understand the reaction itself. So if we really want to know how molecules behave, you know, when it's going from reactants to products, we need to know first off what kind of molecules are changing, what, what molecules uh, are in the reactants and what molecules are in the products. We also need to know how the energy changes as that reaction progresses. Now another uh, important reason why we study energy in reactions is because a lot of applications of chemistry are concerned only with the energy component of a reaction and not so much the identity of the molecules that are involved in that reaction. For example, in uh, combustion of gasoline, you know, really what we care about is how much energy are we getting out of the combustion of gasoline, not so much the products or the reactants that are involved. Now, nowadays, you know, because of global warming, we do care a lot more about the products, in this case CO2, because that turns out to be one of the gases that uh, is responsible for um, increasing the temperature of the planet. But prior to that, you know, before we knew that this is happening, one, the, the, main, con you know, the main concern uh, as far as uh, a combustion of gasoline is just how much energy can we extract out of that process, okay? So understanding energy, therefore, has both, you know, theoretical importance as well as practical importance. Now let's look at this example really quickly in terms of how energy is really affecting everything, everything we do in our daily life. Um, you know, a lot of you probably drink uh, bottled water and you might buy a lot of these, you know, in, in, in uh, boxes from a grocery store. Uh, and just for you to uh, understand that one, making one liter of bottled water actually takes a lot of uh, energy. And I'm going to give you a couple of examples here. Making one liter of bottled water actually takes about approximately three liters of water to make in terms of equivalent energy. And the reason is because in order to make that bottled water, you need to, you know, make it, which costs energy, just manufacture, just make it in the factory. You need to ship it probably from one location to another location. And then once you get it there, you need to distribute it from the, uh, uh, you know, from, from the harbor, you need to distribute it to different locations where the stores where the bottled water is actually going to be sold. So you're going to consume some energy just for all of these processes. And people have quantified this. It turns out that it takes actually more water to make 
one liter of uh, bottled water. Now, in terms of equivalence in energy, you actually need about 3.4 times 10 to the 6 joules uh, of energy, which is equivalent to having a 100 light bulb uh, on for about 10 hours. Okay, so if you have a, if you go home and take a look at your light bulb, see if they're 100 watt, and turn that thing on and s turn it on for 10 hours. That's approximately what's uh, the amount of energy needed to just produce one of these bottle of water. Okay. So hopefully you can have an idea of why you know energy is such an important uh, concept to be to discuss, and specifically when it relates to chemical reaction. Now, in terms of you know theory, in terms of understanding you know our microscopic world, energy is very important because energy actually relates to molecular structure. You probably understand this idea that if I take a rubber band, or if you take a rubber band, and you start to stretch that rubber band, you're putting energy into the rubber band, and as a result, you're changing the structure of that rubber band. If you have a metal bar or a plastic bar and you bend it, you're changing the structure of that bar and at the same time you're putting energy in order to make that happen. Okay? The same thing happens in the microscopic world with atoms and molecules. When a reaction happens, you're changing the structure of the molecules. You start with molecules looking a certain way and then you get products which look completely different from the molecules you're starting with. And in order to facilitate that change, you have to have energy. Either energy is being released or energy is being consumed to make that reaction happen. So changes in the molecular structure, therefore, is correlated with changes in the energy of the reaction. So that's really important. Now, the idea then is that if we can keep track of how the energy changes in a reaction, in other words, if we can measure that energy change, we can then have a movie of how the molecules change from reactants to products because remember that changes in the structure is associated with changes in the energy of the molecules. Once we have that movie, we can then understand how molecules work and more importantly, we can predict in the future how these same molecules will behave in new reactions. And that's the power of understanding the energy of a reaction. Now, of course, it's not that easy to be able to relate it right away, so you need to understand some basic concepts in, uh, for you to be able to quantify how energy uh, in, in a chemical reaction uh, is. So we're going to first start talking about some just definitions that are important in thermodynamics and thermochemistry. Then we'll talk about specifically from a theoretical perspective, if we want to quantify energy, from a chemical reaction, what do we need to look at? And we're going to focus specifically on these two things, work and heat, and we're going to talk about what kind of equations can we use to calculate the energy that is transferred as work and energy that's transferred as heat. And then later on, we'll talk about specifically the tool that we're going to use, which is called a calorimeter, and the science of that is called calorimetry. And then we'll talk about a specific type of heat energy, which is called uh, enthalpy, and we'll talk about how we can calculate enthalpy of a reaction because that turns out to be the way that um, the energy of a chemical reaction is most often uh, measured and quantified. Okay.